six man to man podcast. Yours truly, Darius Butler, co host Antoine Bethea. Yo, yo, we got a yeah, we got a special, special guest today, Vontae Davis, um, both of our former teammates, um, out in Indy. And uh, so you guys should enjoy enjoy that uh, that interview. Huh? But um, as far as I just want to get your thoughts real quick um, with the guys opting out, Twan. Uh, you know, what, what's your thoughts on that? Uh, is it more than you expected, less than you expected, kind of what you expected? I think it's kind of what I expected at this point, at this moment in time. I think uh, we're going to have a few more. Um, but then again, you know, just with what's going on and um, guys are just, you know, nervous about their safety, about the safety of their families, man. I see exactly why they're doing it. So um, I think uh, within the next couple of days, once we get a few more days in training camp and um, and guys might not like they might not like what they see. You know? Yeah, I think there might be a few more guys that opt out, man. So um, it's, it's, it's going to be one of them, them tough things, because as you can see, I'm um, down there in Florida with the uh, Florida Marlins, you know, 13 people test positive for COVID. So I just think once these, once the guys get out there and start playing, man, I think we're going to see some positive cases. Not to put that out there, but it's just, I'm just being real. So yeah, um, I do that. think it's going to be some more guys that I do Yeah, you see the bubble working with the NHL and the um, NBA, but these leagues that aren't going to be in a bubble, um, you can only see the inevitable, and that's going to be, you know, tests. Uh, coming back positive, and then, you know, guys going to have to be quarantined or it's going to be passed around. You know how it is in the NFL locker room. So we're hoping for the best, but, uh, you know, obviously being realistic at the same time. But we'll see, man. But we're going to uh, jump to this uh, Devontae interview, and, uh, you know, let me know what you guys think. I can't wait for this interview, man. One of my closest friends in the league from my time in the league. Uh, got drafted in the same year, 2009. Played over 120 games in the league, 20 plus in the set, 22 in the set, two time Pro Bowler, uh, 10 year or nine year, however you want to look at it, a vet in the league, owner of the V Zone down here in Florida, man, Vontae Davis. Welcome to the show, man. Man, what's up with y'all, boys, man? I appreciate y'all having me, man. <laughs> I'm glad, be glad to have you. Obviously, you know, my co host, Antoine Bethea, 14 year vet. What up, Tweets? What's good? What's going on? Again, Tay, man, appreciate you jumping on the show, man. And shoot, man, we're going to dive into it, man. Like D-Butt said, man, um, a hell of a career. Um, you know, 100 plus, 120 plus games, 20 plus interceptions, and um, did that at a very, very high level. Um, obviously, you know, coming into the league, got drafted um, by the Miami Dolphins, man, and then from there um, to the Indianapolis Colts, man. Just talk to us a little bit about, you know, your the start of your career in Miami, man. How was it for you on and off the field? Well, um, obviously, I would say, you know, coming from college, man, just um, that transitioning far as in the film room, you know, that was that was the challenge I had when I first came in the league, you know, in Miami. And um, I think the best thing that happened to me probably was going to Indy. And I got around guys like you. Uh, Reggie Wayne, Robin Mathis, Dwight Freeman, D. Buck, that kind of showed me what, what it takes to be a professional and, you know, um, taking the film room to the field, man. You guys did that at a high level. I've never been around a group of, um, you know, veterans that took the film room that serious, man. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a big nah. part of it. I know making that transition – um, to coming from the from from college to the league, that's a huge transition for us. And especially, uh, you know, you come in, you get away with you can get away with a lot. Especially being a high draft pick like you were, uh, first round pick, obviously an elite athlete. Um, on the college level, I tell people all the time, you get away with a lot just off your athletic prowess. And then once you get to the NFL, it really becomes the game between the ears. And uh, you know, I try to preach that. Uh, and drive that home with these young guys. Like, man, you go, your, your athletic ability is going to keep you in the league for a couple of years, but at some point you got to separate yourself in that film room and what you're doing off the field. You know, that's uh, probably equally or even more important, uh, you know, in, in the league. And I know once you uh, – when I got with you in Indy, you were always on top of on top of taking care of your body. Like, you was always in that cold. So, like, religiously, you were probably mm -hmm. T.Y., it was probably the most religious dudes I knew. You know exactly what time I see y'all boys in the cold tub. Uh, so, like, what, what, where did you get that from? Was that something you picked up from your older brother since he was in the league, or was that something you just kind of picked up through your own journey? 
Um, I'll probably say just that whole, it was just a growth process from coming from Miami to Indy where I was just around a lot of veterans. Um, you know, I wouldn't say nothing. I, it was Reggie Wayne. You know, I walk in the locker room, I see Reggie Wayne, Dwight Freeman, man. I, these guys was in the league before I got there. So I was yeah. kind of scared to actually walk up to these dudes. But one thing I did was I, I observed those guys, man. And I always watched what they did. And I would notice mm -hmm. Reggie Wayne, Robert Mathis, all those guys, you know, they got in the cold tub. They took care of their body. So I, I kind of learned that through the veterans as well. And Andy, man. Yeah. Nah, that's dope. That's dope. And, uh, and again, man, I can kind of piggyback on that, too, because I did the same thing, you know, coming into the locker room, just seeing these guys who, who've been doing it a number of, year, number of years. It wasn't that, you know, <clears throat> I'm a so much talk a lot, but, you know, just sit back and watch and see what they do so I can just um, I can learn and, and, and follow the footsteps. So um, I definitely feel you on that. I was back, had some technical difficulties uh, with, with, with Twan's visuals, but, um, hey, you know, as we do, got to adjust and keep it moving. So uh, Twan is on the line, on the phone, and uh, I know he got a question for uh, Tay. Yeah, yeah. So, again, apologize for that. But, Tay, um, I was saying that I think at the time, your time at Indy, I think you were playing at a very high level. And, you know, at times you would travel um, with the number one receiver. Um, during your time when you was at Indy and you was doing your thing, what, what receiver would you say kind of brought the best out of you um, at the corner position? Man, I have to say that dog in Houston, man. The Andre Johnson, man. You know, obviously uh -huh. when we went in those games, man, I, I wanted to make sure I was clicking on all cylinders because I just yeah. knew, you know, Andre was the top receiver, probably top three in the league at the time. Big and he great. always been a challenge for me to co cover and, and playing them twice a year because they was in the division. I had to see them twice a year, so... Those yeah. games I marked on my schedule because I just knew what type of, you know, um, player I was dealing with. Yeah. So, so speaking actually, about division, so we got drafted into the same division. Got drafted to the AFC East. I got drafted to the Patriots in the second round. You went in the first round to the Dolphins, my own team, Dolphins. And I remember uh, early on in our career, probably had to be our rookie year, actually, uh, when you picked up, you got that pick on Randy. And uh, so it, it's one thing, it's crazy when you go you watching these dudes, you got watching Randy Moss, Tom Brady, watching these dudes your whole life playing football. And then the next thing you know, you fresh out of Illinois in the first round, and now you lined up across from this dude. So you, you, you talking to Andre Johnson just made me think about that. And, and being your teammate, I feel like your best games um, came against uh, D-Hop, actually, when he became the top dog in Houston, you know, when, when Andre moved on. Uh, we would play DeAndre Hopkins. Like, I felt like he was always locked in. You really locked up on that game. And another one I would definitely say will be on the top of that list was uh, uh, D. Thomas uh, uh, in Denver. We played Denver, which was yeah. always a big game for us. Obviously, anytime Peyton coming back, that was another cat yeah. we watched. As young as playing ball, when he came back, you play, you play your best ball against them cats, man. So, so yeah, as, as a teammate, from my view, that's when I definitely say you had your, uh, you know, your best, your best, your best moments, your best games against them cats. Nah, I appreciate what? it. I appreciate it, D. But yeah, for sure, man. I seen the work you put in. What you? I, I heard you say something. Tony, you saying something? Yeah, because I, I wanted, I wanted to kind of dive into that where I'm talking to different listeners as a, as a corner and DB, and you want to be like, you know, I'm having to go against a dog against him, like, you know, Andre Johnson, uh, Demarius Thomas. Like, what's your week like? It's on, like, film study? Like, what are you looking on film? Like, how are you approaching practice? Is it different? You know, like that? Like, what's your whole, like, I said, what are we leading up to that game? All right, so I'm, oh, I don't know if you heard yeah, it clear. I'm, I'm going to repeat it just, just so everybody okay. here. Um, but uh, he, he was basically talking about going going against uh, cats like D-Hop and, and Demarius Thomas. Like, what was the process like? Um, going into them game, like going into that week of the game, because we talk about a lot about what goes on behind the scenes as far as game mm -hmm. plan and stuff like that. So, what was what was those game weeks like? Um, I guess in comparison to others. Well, Matt, when you're going against a top receiver, like soon soon as that Sunday game is over, um, my mind is already on DeAndre Hopkins um, a week yeah. before the next game. <laughs> so. My biggest thing is to watch him on film and obviously see what he do 
against different type of DBs. You know, I would fi- try to find a DB that's similar to me, that kind of has yeah. the same playing style. So that way, I, you know, it would give me a better understanding how he would try to attack me. You know, so you literally, yep. you literally have to study these guys, man, where you have to almost know them better than they know themselves. Yeah, that's a fact. That's, that's another part of it, knowing them, uh, knowing the coordinators, uh, watching cats, you know, who not only play like you, but playing maybe a similar system. Um, mm-hmm. That's that That's that chess game that goes into it. Because being on that island, boy, it's unforgiving. It's, 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 uh, it's out unforgiving there. out there. You can play... 60 snaps and 55 of them be great. If you have three or four bad snaps, and that'll be the game. And you'll be on everybody highlighting, everybody be, hey, man, cut this dude, this dude sucks, get him out of here. Uh, so it, it, it's unforgiving back back on that back end, man, especially on that on that corner position. So uh, I'm sure the fans enjoy that, appreciate that insight on, on what it's like, especially, you know, top dog going against uh, top dog. Nah, no, doubt, no, no, no. I thought you said something. What'd you say, though, Tay? No, I said no doubt. You're absolutely right, man. For sure. Yeah, man. So let's get into it. I know uh, I've got one of the questions from uh, one of the uh, one of our listeners who asked, "What? Did, how did you feel about, uh, you know, people throw around the culture word a lot. And, oh, the culture here, the culture there. What did you feel about? How did you feel about our culture uh, during your time with the coach? I know I got my thoughts on it, but what was your thoughts on that? Oh, man. I mean, I think we had a, a real good culture, you know, obviously having veterans like, you know, um, Reggie Wayne and, and Rob Mathis. But, you know, when when those guys left, we was the old, we was the vets in the locker room. Yeah. You know, Twan, once Twan and them left, we was mm-hmm. the vets in the locker room. And, um, I, I would say Indy was a good – it was a good culture, man. Good. We was I was very close with my teammates, man. It, we did everything together. That was yeah. the difference from Miami where it was kind of a lot of individual guys. And, you know, yeah. on a team, you know, you got to all be on the same accord, man, for you to go out on Sunday and, you know, execute. Yeah. So, I mean, like like kind of piggyback on, on what you said, Um, I, I, I felt like our coach was do- a dope too. You know, we, we spent a lot of time with each other. I know every um every Monday we, we got together as DBs, you know, made sure we went out to dinner together. Uh, watched the Monday night football game, talked about the previous game. Um, you know, just we kind of touched on it last episode. We had Trey Boston on it. We were talking about some of the challenges that that team will have um, just by so many new faces in the building and uh, guys mm-hmm. not really being familiar with each other and not really being, you know, it, it's just harder to, um, you know, go to war with somebody that you not you don't really know as well. Um, but, uh, yeah. you know, talking about overcoming those challenges. But our coach, man, I felt like it, it, it was dope from the top down, man. We won a lot of games. Um, that I felt like nobody felt like we would win. Um, and when, when, like you said, that torch is passed, when Twan moves on, when Rob retires, Reggie moves on, um, and now it's like, all right, Mike, Mike Adams came in. He was he was the OG in yeah. the room, and he, 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 he laid, you know, certain things as far as his time and his wisdom and laying his foundation. So it was it was definitely dope. Greg Toler, man, with Greg, when we had our run, it was me, you, and Greg at that one, two, three, man. It was it yeah. was. Ain't too many cats want to cover crazy. Ain't too many cats want to show in a few years who's rocking. That, that, that's nah. that's for sure. It was it was it was definitely good times, man. And you can't speak enough about how important the culture is to a building, to a locker room, to a team. And I think mm-hmm. all you guys kind of hit on it, where regardless of you know who who, who comes in, um, regardless of, 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 of who there, this thing, if you have to go back. Again, man, I think we had some great times, again, on and off the field, knowing, getting to know one one another, um, getting to know our families and things of that nature. So definitely, man, I think by far, Coach was probably one of the best best organizations that I've been with. And I'm not talking about it. And, you know, we can take out the coaches or whatever the case may be. I'm just talking about Mm -hmm. how close um, the guys in the locker room was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that and that matters, man. That that translates to the field. I think, um, you know, like I said, that's why we a lot of times did some things that people didn't expect. And uh, you know, obviously, you know, once your quarterback get banged up and stuff like that, you ain't gonna win the the, the, the games you're supposed to win. But we definitely we definitely uh, held our own, man. I definitely enjoyed my time. Um, you know, I played the three organizations, Patriots, um, 
uh, Carolina and Indy, and I would say out of the three, you know, that Indy, that family, that tight knit circle, uh, I would say the same thing that that, that Twan did. But um, yeah. you know, moving, I guess moving on, um, going, you know, obviously getting to later your late later back into your career, you uh, moved on from the Colts, you went on to uh, Buffalo, and then you had the uh, you, you you your famous retirement, and I remember calling <laughs> you that day. Uh, I've matter of fact, I think I was at a Jacksonville. Patriots game in Jacksonville. And I think Mike Adams hit me like, yo, you seen Tay retire? I'm like, Tay retire, what you mean? I'm at the game right now. Like, the game's still going on. What you mean? Yeah. Okay, so, so I, I get on the phone. I'm like, man, let me, first, my first thoughts is like, man, let me hit my boy make sure he's good, man. Like, I don't know what can because yeah. you never know what's going on behind the scenes. And the right, 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 right. And that's something you, you don't really hear. So, mm-hmm. uh, you know, got on the phone, called you. And you were like, hey, man, you know, I don't remember exact words you said, but I remember you like, hey, man, time is everything. You know, I'm like, damn, time, I, I feel you. But I guess kind of take it, I know you probably talked about this a few times, but just take us there. And, um, you know, I, I salute you for definitely making your decision and, um, you know, making what you felt like the best decision was for you and your family. Mm-hmm. I think that's most important. You see a lot of guys doing that right now with guys opting out. And for you to be in that position um, those years ago, I guess what went into that um, that moment? Well, man, it's honestly, man, like, you know, as athletes, we train all year round. You know, the motivation it takes, the discipline it takes to um, play at a high level, you know? Mm-hmm. So I tell people all the time, I didn't wake up this morning thinking I was leaving at <laughs> halftime, <laughs> you know? So it was, it, it was one of those things where, you know, D-Butt, Twan as well, you play so many games, you, and you know that feeling. You know how it is to prepare during the week and get ready yeah. for a game. This day was totally different. I mean, it's one day in my whole career was mm-hmm. totally different. It didn't feel right, man. So yeah. it was, you it was one of those for, epiphany for how long mo- at this point? What was so that? You've been, fo- you been playing football at how long at this point? Like from Little League, since, I'm assuming? Yeah, since Little about League, one? man. Yeah. Since Little yeah. League. And we talk about one day out of my career <laughs> – when yeah. it didn't feel right. You know what I'm saying? So I'm also mm-hmm. in a very vulnerable position as well. Yeah. And I realized it was an out-of-body experience, man, epiphany moment where my intuition just led me out of the stadium that day. And um, just, just from that experience, man, I just learned there's going to be there's gonna be stuff that happened in life where you just can't expect everybody to understand it, you know? Facts, facts. And... You know, t- playing in the locker room and being around you guys, I mean, we go to war together. You know, that's the last mm-hmm. thing I wanted to do was let my teammates down, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, so, why? and I knew, I, I knew, I knew my teammates wouldn't understand it, but at that time, it was, it was, it was what led me. So, um, and everybody asked me, uh, why, you know, obviously, why did I lead the game? And I tell them 10 times out of 10, if I went back to that situation, I would have did the same thing. Mm-hmm. And that's something that I have to live with. And, and, and we try not to live with regrets. So to know that if I went back to that situation, no, I would do the same thing. You know, I could live with myself, man. Yeah, you, you know you made the right decision. Because regardless of, you know, what, whoever got to say about it, if you could do that, for sure, you know you made the right decision. Uh, Twan, you had something? I, I can't hear you. Yeah, yeah. Can, you can hear me? Yeah, I'm good. Yeah, we'll you now. Yeah, yeah, nah, but again, I commend you, Tay. Like I said, that's not an easy decision. Um, being that, you know, we, we, we playing in front of a, uh, you know, a bunch of people and for you to make that decision, you know what I'm saying, that's uh, in your best interest, man, pass off to you. And then I kind of want to just piggyback on what you said as far as, you know, in our life that we go through things that, for one, we might not know that's going to come up um, or two, you know, things that we gonna have to fight through and just want a little bit of your story, just how you how you um where you grew up and how you were raised. Um, I know you you've been in much tougher things than this you know, this is what we talk about it. So um, you know, I know a lot of people don't really know you um from where you where you at right now, from where you came from, man. So that that speaks volumes on who you are as a person as well. No, I appreciate that, Swan. Yeah, man, facts, facts. Now, um, on this show, we, we talk obviously more about, you know, what's going on in the field and locker room. 
Um, we talk about the person, the man off the field. Um, uh, you know, obviously you're your man, your black man first, your black man in society. Um, you know, son, brother, all those different things come even before being um, a football player. Now, and part of that decision, like I said, just comparing it to what's going on now, mm-hmm. even though it's different, um, a lot of guys are making tough choices as far as when it's coming when it comes to opting out or not with the COVID pandemic going on. Do mm-hmm. I go to work or not? Some guys, I think the majority of guys that are playing, I I, I talked to someone uh, yesterday, Dan Doc is down in Indy, and I told him, you know, if I was in a situation, I'm 24, 25, I feel like, man, I got to go out here, you know, make this money. Uh, if I get sick, I get sick, I get over it, I beat it, boom, boom, I keep going about our business. But, you know, now in the position I'm in now, it'll probably be a different thought process. You see guys making that choice for different reasons. You were in a position where – uh, financially, you can make that choice and, w- and walk away from the game because uh, of, the, like you said, the reasons that were most important to you. And I saw the story on uh, the interview with uh, Buffalo's GM, uh, actually on Pat <laughs> yeah. McAfee's show. And he was like, hey, yeah, man, I talked to Vontae, he had a conversation, you know, he, cut, he wrote the check, sit the right in. Like, so to be in that, uh, be in that position, um, you know, that's, that's a great place to be. And we try to give advice to, to younger guys and younger people in general about, you know, doing different things with their money. Um, I guess what, what would be one of those first lessons, whether it was a hard lesson um, or one of the first lessons about money that, that, that you learned um, during your time being a professional athlete? Oh, man, I got, I, I got a lot of those. But I, I probably <laughs> have to say, um, you know, once I start taking responsibility, man, just over my finances, everything started to change for me, you know? Um mm-hmm. And when I started to change my mindset just about money in general, um, you know, I would start to prioritize saving. You know, um, yeah. I started to look at myself as athletes, man. We are the commodity. You know, we're the asset. And yep. um, I started to look at myself in that way. So I realized, like, obviously, the money we make in that short period of time, after taxes, obviously, that was Uncle Sam, you know, he's going to get his. He you take out after that 40%. For after time. that forty percent, everything else is profit. <laughs> so mm-hmm. that's how I looked at it, and I and I try to prioritize savings. So once I cut those taxes out, you know, I looked at how much I was bringing in, how much I was saying, and I realized that as athletes, it's really not about how much we make; it's more about what we keep. You know. Yeah. So when I understood that, man, I I saved over eighty percent of my money, man. I was just trying mm-hmm. to put everything away. And learning that at that time probably probably was the best decision I ever I ever made, man. Hey, yeah, it obviously set hard. me up for life now, you know. And, and mm-hmm. it was at a time where it was just, you know, a time where I was able to during those times create financial freedom for myself. But to have yeah. that with all, to have that with all at a young age, man, it was, it was, it was, it was, it was a blessing, man. And, and that's what I advise young guys to do more of. Is just, you know, obviously think of their self as the as the asset, you know, um, their commodity. Um, obviously, when you go through this league and you get older as a player, you, you know, obviously you're not as valuable no more. You know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah. guys just need to understand that from a business standpoint. And I think that's what really helped me when I started to get, get that mindset at a younger age. Nah, sure. that's, that's big that's time. Good stuff. That's good big time, man. Um, and, and to keep going on that, on that, on that same route, let's talk about what you're doing on the field down there in Florida, man, B-Zone Therapy. Uh, tell the people what you got going on down there with that. Oh, well, V-Zone is an um, integrated medicine um, facility, man. So, um, And like you said, us as athletes, that nobody really knows your body better than yourself. You yep. know, so I kind of got in tune with my body when I was with the coach. You know, I, was always, I would hear things, you know, obviously with retired players was dealing with, you know, guys like, you know, Andre Waters, you um, Aaron Hernandez, um, Junior Seau. You know, these guys, you know. They, yeah, they, God they, rest his soul. That was my teammate my rookie year, man. No, absolutely. Yeah, you know, obviously I was hearing about these guys, man. It, it just always in the back of my head that my health was a priority after the game of football. You know, and mm-hmm. that would kind of got me motivated about V-Zone. Not just, for, not just for me, myself as a player, but also, you know, obviously to the general population. You know, I just want to help people live a sustainable and healthy lifestyle. 
Yeah, that, that's that's definitely important, man. And so we got V Zone therapies down here, um, down here in South Florida. So definitely tap in and get that um, get that medical care, man. I know probably a year. It probably got to about year seven or eight when I started, um, you know, getting like you know different vitamin uh, IVs and stuff during the week of the mm-hmm. game. You know, getting right, making sure my my body is on point as far as you know what's going in it. And so that I'm 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 performing at optimal level uh, when it comes to playing playing on the on the field, and that's you know when you're still in your 20s and your 30s. So as you lead a game, those things don't go away. You see, health becomes almost even more um, important the older you get. Um, what you eat and how you sleep, and I, I know you were big. You were big, probably Freeney, Dwight Freeney, and probably you were probably the top my top two teammates when it came to you know how I just seeing how much guys. Um, invested in their body, whether it was an art machine or a hyperbaric mm-hmm. chamber. Like, I feel like you was always on point and kind of uh, one step ahead of the game when it came to just, uh, you know, invest, invest in your body. And everybody had their different ways of doing things. You know, you got your, mm-hmm. you know, maybe I just an ice tub, a uh, hot tub type guy. Uh, maybe I'm a training room guy, whatever it is. But you was definitely uh, one step ahead of the game. So it don't surprise me that in your post-football career, uh, you know, you took that passion and became a, a black owner out mm-hmm. here, um, you know, giving it back to, to everybody else, man. So definitely hats off, and I'll salute you for that. No, nah, thanks, man. I really appreciate it, man. And, and, and same thing with you guys, man. I love what you guys are doing, bringing this content. You know, obviously, a lot of young players need to hear this, man, because like you, like, like you guys know, these conversations we have now after football, we didn't have these in the locker room. Yeah. So it's, yeah. it's it's great that you guys are doing this, man, and I respect both of you guys, man. And keep up the good work, man. Hey, man, appreciate you, man. Appreciate, appreciate you for coming you, on. Appreciate you, man. Appreciate you for coming on, man. Uh, I got one more, one more question. Man. Toy, you got something else? I'm gonna ask you a question. Nah, nah, that's it. That's it for me. Okay. Yeah, I just wanted to ask you, um, from all the plays in Indy, what would be, I guess, your favorite play or favorite game? Um, that really stands out uh, above the rest, if, if 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 there are any. Oh, I have to say that um, division championship game against um, Denver. Oh, in Denver. Ooh. Yeah, in Denver, man. That I game. That. That probably I remember that right right home. Game. Yeah. Yeah, that, that was, game, that was, that was man. A big game, man. We upset, upset Denver, upset Peyton in Denver um, to punch our ticket to the AFC championship. Uh, that was that was a huge game. Yeah, that was probably that was that was definitely one of my favorite moments. Uh, you know, like I said, just getting on that plane. I remember celebrating with the teammates. We had, we had definitely felt like we accomplished a lot. That was a lot, a lot that went in that man. So that's big, bro. Hey, no, man, once again, man, appreciate you, bro. No, yes, I appreciate you too, bro. That was uh, as expected. That was a great interview with uh with with, with Vante, man. Vante gave us some great insight on, on you know what was going on. Um, obviously in the coast locker room, what was going on with him. Uh, throughout his journey in the NFL, everybody has their very own unique journey. So uh, I think he dropped a lot of gems on his on and off the field that um that guys can learn from. Man to man, yes sir. Man to man, yeah.